Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Kender. This video will take you through some select problems on your linear equation study guide. Now before we actually begin, here's the disclaimer. These problems can be solved more than one way. So if you do the problem a different way, that's completely fine. And feel free to share that when you come back to class. Now let's get started. For numbers 1 through 3, I wrote in the three forms of a linear equation. You can use this to reference as you move through the packet. For the bottom, we're using the word bank to fill in all the blanks on the graph. You can fill in the quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can fill in the y-axis. The x-axis, this arrow should go to that line there. The point zero, 0, is called the origin. Where a point crosses the y-axis, that's called a y-intercept. It crosses the x-axis, that's an x-intercept. In a coordinate, the first number that it's pointing to is an x coordinate and the second number that it points to is a y coordinate. You should know all these elements on a graph. Let's move on to page two. For page two, you had a quiz on this already. All you're doing is finding the slope. For four through six, you're counting your rise over run. So what I like to do is I like to Pick out nice points that cross very evenly. So for number four, you go up one, so that's a rise of one. And over three, it's a run of three. You can go ahead and on your own do number five and six the same exact way. Remember on number six, the line goes down, so you should make sure that your slope is negative. For number seven, it might have been a while since you've worked with the tables. Remember that slope is the change in y over the change in x. So we're subtracting our y's on top and our x's on the bottom. 30 minus 15 is 15. 2 minus 1 is 1. So our slope there is 15. Number 8 is done the same exact way. For numbers 9 through 12, you're using the slope formula. If it helps you, you can label these ordered pairs as x1, y1, x2, y2. And then you're just plugging everything into the formula. So for number 9, I would write 6 minus 2, because we're doing y2 minus y1 over negative 1 minus 3. Okay, 6 minus 2 is 4. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Make sure we simplify. 4 over negative 4 is a slope of negative 1. And again, we can do 10, 11, 12 the same exact way that we did number 9. Page 3 should look very familiar. It gives you a graph and you have to answer the following questions. So given this graph, we need to calculate the slope. Slope, as we know, is rise over run. So I'm going to choose two very nice points. That way I can easily count. It goes down two, so our rise is negative two, and over one. Negative two over one is negative two. An x-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis, and this line crosses at negative 1. But remember, we can't just write it as negative 1 because the x-intercept is a point, an ordered pair. So I'm going to write it as negative 1, comma, 0, and that's my x-intercept. My y-intercept is going to be the point where it crosses the y-axis. Right, it crosses at negative 2, but we have to write that in an ordered pair. 
which is 0, comma, negative 2. All right, so then we just use this information to write the equation. We know y equals mx plus b. Fill that in. y equals negative 2x minus 2, because our y-intercept is negative 2. And you're done with that one. Page 4 is the same idea as page 3, except instead of the graph, it gives you the equation. So number 17, identify the slope. Let me just even write here, y equals mx plus b. m represents the slope. The slope here is negative 2. To find the x-intercept, remember how we set the y equal to 0 and solve for x? So I'm just rewriting the equation with 0 equals negative 2x plus 6, subtracting 6 from both sides. Do that over here. We got x is 3, but again we need to write that in an ordered pair, so we need to write it as 3 comma 0. Okay? The y-intercept we can get just by looking at this equation because we know that b represents the y-intercept. We know the b equals 6 and the ordered pair would be 0, 6. Now let's graph it. We start out by graphing our y-intercept, which is 6. And we use our slope, negative 2, to graph some more points. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so on. And that's our line, done. All right, for number 22 and 23, we're just identifying the slope and the y-intercept. So we're just going to say m equals and b equals. The slope is negative 3. The y-intercept is 9. Done. For number 24 through 27, you just have to graph the equations. You may want to manipulate them first, which means turn them into slope-intercept form if it works for you. Let's do 25. 25 is clearly not in slope-intercept form. We should get the y alone to turn it into slope-intercept form. So let's add 7, leaving us with y equals 2 thirds x plus 3. Now it's in slope-intercept form. Our y-intercept is 3. Our slope is 2 thirds. So up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3 and so on. The others can be done very similarly. Page 6 asks you about horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, now the way I remember this is I look at this and I say, okay, it has to cross the y-axis at whatever number it gives you, at 4. So on the y-axis, I'm putting 4, and I'm making my line cross the y-axis. So it becomes a horizontal line. You can conclude what number 29 is going to be. Let's do number 30. This time, it gives you the graph. You write the equation. Well, which axis does it cross? It crosses the y-axis, so it becomes y equals crosses at negative 5. y equals negative 5. And then you can assume what number 31 will be. You can do those on your own. Now page 7 deals with the infamous point-slope form. Okay, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's the generic formula. But now when you have actual examples, m, x1, and y1 are going to be actual numbers. So we need to use our equations to figure out what those numbers are. Now, number 32 asks, write an equation in point-slope form of a line that passes through the point 4, 3. Let me just label this x and y. It'd be a good idea for you to do that too. And has a slope of negative 2. Okay? Let me fill in my givens. y minus whatever, equals 
m, whatever that is, times x minus whatever. Okay, now let's just fill it in. Our m in the problems said our slope is negative 2, so negative 2 goes here. And now the point we were given, that x1 represents the x-coordinate. So we're going to put a 4 in this spot here. And this y coordinate goes right there. And then you're done. That's point slope form. Number 3 takes it backwards. 33 takes it backwards. This time it gives you the equation. Now let's name the ordered pair that it passes through. Okay? We know that these are the things we're really looking at. Okay? B asks for the slope of the line. We know the 4 is in that spot, so that's a 4. And the ordered pair that the line passes through, an ordered pair is x and y. Okay? The x coordinate is here, but since it's a plus and the equation has a negative, that means it must be a negative 3. This 1 is there. The minus is in the problem by default, so it's a positive one. A little hint for you, if it's plus in the equation, it's minus in the ordered pair. If it's minus in the ordered pair, it's positive in the equation. 34 and 35 are done in very similar ways, and you can do those on your own. In 36 through 39, we need to write a linear equation. I assume that most of you are going to use y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. So I'll show you number 39 using that. If you choose to write your equation in slope intercept form, remember that you need to identify your m and your b. So number 39 gives you two points. Use the slope formula to calculate your m. Now you can see how I just calculated that to be 2. Now we don't know our b. But we do know two points which give us x and y coordinates. You can choose either one of them, but plugging them into y equals mx plus b will allow you to calculate the b. So then you get a value for your b. We already calculated the m, and we just plug those into our equation y equals mx plus b. You don't even need to write the zero if you don't want to. In number 42, we're actually doing something very similar to number 39. We just have to recognize that we need to write an equation of the line parallel to this, which means that our new line is going to have the same slope as that. So we know automatically that our m is going to be 3. And then we use this point that has the x and y coordinates, and we just plug it all in to find our b. So we've got 5 equals 3 times negative 2 plus b, and then we solve. If you can see there, I just got 11 for b, and then we just plug it into our equation. y equals 3x plus 11, and we're done. 43 is going to be done a very similar way, except this one's asking for a line perpendicular. So the slope that we use is not going to be negative 2 thirds. It's going to be the opposite reciprocal of that. So it's going to be positive 3 over 2. And then again, we just use the point given, the x and the y, plug it in, and then we're good. 40 and 41 are word problems, but they use the same exact skills that we've been doing. Read number 40 and try it on your own before looking at the equation that I write. The problem says Blake's Cookie Shop charges a flat fee of $2. Flat fee means a one-time fee for a plate of cookies, plus $3 per additional pound. Write an equation that represents the total cost for a customer's cookie purchase. So what I'm going to write the equation, I'm going to say y, the total cost, equals $3 per pound plus our flat fee of $2. And then we just graph it. All right, so hopefully this helps. Great job, and I'll see you next class. Goodbye.